What's up, guys? How's it going? This is BBB here with Jay Beastie. Hi, guys. And we are going to be going through a two-tabling session that he played at the 1026 Max on Stars, I guess about a month or two ago, maybe. Uh, just kind of going through some hands, talking about some stats and some analysis and so on, hopefully having a good time. Uh, by the way, Jay Beastie's name is Jonas, but I'm going to call him either Jonas, Jay, Jay Ball, Jay Bird. So don't get too distracted by all my chatter. Uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your your HUD setup, okay? Yeah, sure. Well, um, I've got um, the VPIP and the preflip price stats um, on the first two places. Okay. Um, and then I've got the aggression factor. That's pretty standard, I guess. Um, other very interesting uh, stats are the um, when to showdown stat and at the right um, second line. Okay, so um, right here, uh, okay, I see. The second yeah. numbers, okay. Okay, and um, on the far left, um, second line is um, um, the folded big blind to steal. Um, and um, r right beside, beside, beside that is the um, attempt to steal. Okay. I guess um, those are the most interesting. Okay, and um, that's uh, that's fine. And then tell me a little bit about any of these players that you recognize. What sort of info do we have about them? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll start at the left table. Um, this Gastino guy, I think this is, yeah, obviously the reason I sit at this table. Okay, this guy He's, with that position on, all right. Exactly, yeah. He seems to be loose passive, um, or rather, yeah, rather bad. And um, the other two guys are um, Stars Rex at this limit. Um, yeah, I think most of you guys will recognize Enwood. And um, then we've got King Charles, who is um, multi-tabling Rex, I think. Um, plays many tables, and uh, he might be supernova elite, so... Yeah, yeah. King, King Charles looks, just from his stats, maybe like more of a regular tag. I don't want to say ABC, but, you know, a straightforward tag, maybe. Uh, and Wooch, I think, is more of a lag taggy kind of player. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And then how about this table on the right here? Yeah, I've got position on um, Fire Coral, again, a rather loose passive guy. Okay, so, so good I... seat selection here. Or good seat exactly. selection. Exactly. I like my seats. Um yeah, and the other guys, um, yeah, well, this Noma guy, I um, have like almost 3,000 3, hands on him, but um, I have no notes on him. So that uh, has to be from my uh, multi-tabling time before uh, you coached me, before you taught me how to uh, how to take notes. I wouldn't say me. I taught you, but I mean, it is something that I, I do focus on, and I think... Uh, it's definitely useful to try and get some notes. Uh, yeah, I almost didn't take notes before that, so um, so we're I really assume, try sorry to get reads. No, yeah, yeah, it's definitely useful to get reads. We're gonna assume this guy Nomar is kind of a maybe a little tighter, uh, straightforward tag. Yeah, uh, he's he seems to be ABC. Yeah. This guy over here on the two to our right, P player T, seems kind of lag taggy. Is that right? Yeah, I agree. So his um, his um, preflop rise and VPIP stats are not really um, converging to 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 a, to a standard um, stat. So um, it's it's too far of a gap between them. So he might be um, cold calling or limping. So that's yeah, there's something a little weird going on with that. That's exactly. a good point. And uh, doesn't look like we have very many hands on this other guy up here, the warrior. Um, I think I have um, quite many hands, but um, oh, okay. it's uh, it's just not in this uh, window anymore. So I think that may be 2,000 or 200. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he cut off a little. All right, well, let's assume he's kind of tag, lag, tag until proven otherwise, I guess. Seems but, like. Yeah, and, and I'm not quite sure about that. So I... It seems like the default player in these games is, is probably a tag or lag tag. Yeah. Uh, how, just very briefly before we get to some hands, how do these players generally view you? What sort of image do you have in these games? Um, that's interesting. I think I um, might be considered quite a quite a big lag. Um, I think um, 
many may view me as too aggressive and too loose. Um, and there was definitely a time where that was the case, and it still might be the case. I don't know. Um, but um, I think guys, if they um, adjust, they will rather um, yeah adjust like to a, to a lag than to attack. Okay, so we're expecting that. You're going to get some action. You're going to be able to value bet pretty thinly and get expected to get called down by ace high a lot, things like that. I agree. Uh, all right, that's good to know. And uh, it looks like N. Wooch is on both your tables. I know that you're going to be getting into a lot of spots with him, which should be interesting yep. in the video. <laughs> um, basically, guys, for those of you watching at home, we've sort of taken some notes ahead of time on hands that we want to talk about. And whenever we get to a really interesting hand, we will either pause and talk about it a little bit or kind of continue talking about it afterward if there aren't any exciting hands coming up for a while, hopefully to kind of get the timing going pretty well. Uh, let me go ahead and, and hit play here on the recording. And uh, we've got Ace-5 suited over here on the right table. It looks like we got 3-bet preflop, I guess, and just fold right away on this pretty bad flop. It seems pretty standard. Uh, Jonas, by the way, feel free to interrupt me anytime, make any kind of comments and so on. Sure. So far, pretty standard. I guess while we wait for a couple of big hands to come, well, let's see what happens here on the right. Okay, so right away this guy open limps the small blind. Uh, kind of talk me through this hand a little bit. Yeah, well, um, I'm certainly not raising preflop, um, but um, now that I've hit um, second pair, I think I can value bet if he doesn't show any aggression. Yeah, I mean, I think you flopped a pair. You've just got to value bet it down. I see ace high call down there pretty often. Uh, yep. I think it's a little surprising that he played the hand as passively as he did. But it's uh, good to note, I guess. Yeah, and I see taking a note right away, which is good. If he check raises or raises at any point in that hand, what are you reacting? Or how are you reacting? Um, I th think, um, well, I, I'm not quite sure about this guy because he, his aggression factor isn't that low for 50 VPIP guy. Right. And I still got a second pair in blind versus blind, so I'm definitely seeing the river and, well, it's thin if I'm going to showdown or not, but I'm, mo most probably I will. Yeah, that's, I guess the first hand you do have a pair and he took a weird line. You want to see yep. what he's up to, that's a good point. He seems like the kind of player potentially where if uh, he starts putting in a lot of action, we could be worried. Okay, here's an ace-10 on the left. Let's see if we play this. We get three bet out of the small blind here. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it for a sec because I think it brings up something that we're going to be talking about later in the video, which is capping here when you open and you get three bet in kind of the re-steal situation. What are your thoughts on sort of do you cap off in here? What do you cap? That kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think um, I I tend to cap quite often, and um, I'm definitely capping a sense some of the time. I I would say um, against um, well, I'm in the cutoff. It's four handed, and um, the small blind the small blind uh, three bets me. So I'm definitely capping um, a good amount of the time. Um, I'm I think I'm always capping ace jack uh, and better aces. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the reason I did not cap is, um, yeah, well, there are many reasons. I think the most important ones are that he's rather tight, um, and that it's, um, yeah, it's it's still an ace, which which is, um, I'd say I'd I'd rather tend to um, tend to cap um, more disguised hands here, so many many pocket pairs, and um, King Queen, Queen Jack, Jack Ten, Ten Ten Nine suited connectors. So you like to um, keep some, uh, you like to keep some ace high hands basically in your, not in your calling range, but in your not capping range, uh, in case you yeah. decide to just kind of call down and try and pick off a bluff. Yeah, exactly. I guess kind of similar to blind versus blind in that you don't always want to three bet all aces out of the big when the small opens. Yeah. Uh, am I correct in assuming that? You're probably not capping King Charles quite as lightly as you're capping N. Wooch, for example, just because N. Wooch is probably three betting a lot more out of the small. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this uh, 19 preflop raise isn't isn't that high. He's quite the tag, and 
Yeah. That's a good point. Um, do you think he's ever three betting hands like, you know, nine eight suited, pocket fours here? I mean pocket fours, I'm sure, but uh or is he gonna be pretty straightforward in his hand range here? Um I I think he's rather straightforward. I think uh yeah, pocket fours will will be in his range. Um maybe pocket fives and uh and above. Um but I, I, I don't think uh he will I, I won't say he, he will never three bet uh nine eight suited but but I think it's uh not not really a huge part of his range. Okay, that makes sense. Uh and I think uh just for the guys watching at home, this kind of situation comes up a few times in the video later on. So I just wanted to sort of start thinking about I'll start the playback again here. Kind of thinking about when we're capping here, what kind of ranges people do it with. Uh, I see a peel here on the flop, and the turn isn't a great card for us. It's not awful, but I feel like he has a lot of pairs and even better ace highs in his range. I think he made a, a solid fold there. What do you think? Yeah, it's uh, kind of tough uh, because I disguised my hand, like I said before. Yeah. Um, but um, I think still his through betting range is rather tight and I'm so assuming he's two barreling probably almost his entire range there once he three bets pre flop. Yeah. Alright, so we have a pair here against Enwooch and that's not a very good turn card. Looks like you are thinking about Well you've got an ace on the other table so you pop it up. <laughs> Let me pause it here for a sec. It looks like you're going to fold. Tell me about sort of your thoughts here. Uh Obviously, you probably tangled with him many times in previous sessions. Here, you have a pair early in the session against him. Uh, I know people always talk about, I have a pair, see you at showdown. Uh, what kind of range are we putting him on here, roughly? When he, uh, um, what did he open preflop, right? Or no, well, we we opened the small, and he called the big, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and then and he raises the flop. Yeah. Um, what sort of hands? I mean, he's not raising a hand like pocket fours on this flop, is he? No, I don't think he ever raises pocket fours. Okay, so we uh, nine eight. When he raises, I think he would raise any of these flop bears, certainly, right? As well as ten x. Yes. Uh, yes. Anything besides that that you think he would raise? Um. Well, it's it's difficult to say because um I think he he may have um some bluffs in his range mm -hmm. um like bluff raising this um this flop it might not be the best flop. To to bluff raise, I'm not sure. But maybe but some of the time he's capable of, you know, raising 8-7 of, of spades here or something, if that's what he has. Or, you know, 6 yeah, of yeah, spades, whatever. Yeah. I think he can, he, he's capable of bluff raising air there and um and bet the turn just because he's in position, uh, it's a blind battle and, yeah. But, um, but, but, but then again, this is not, by far not, not, um, a big enough part of his range, I think. He he really often has a pair there or that has uh, has me beat almost always and yeah uh, I think that yeah. we can both agree the turn card is not a great one for our hand obviously uh, exactly um, if it if it came like running you know two three or something or bricks I'm pretty sure you're showing this down right so yep, yep. Uh, and the cards we don't really want to see are anything completing the straight or uh, I guess an ace because I guess he could pop some. I mean, an ace doesn't really hit his range all that hard, but it's just another overcard to our pair, basically. Um, I think, yeah. Do you think he might, uh, he might, um, raise a hand like, like a seven on, on this flop? Um. How often is he three betting that kind of hand pre-flop? Yeah, that's. I feel like most big aces in his range, he would have three bet pre-flop. Uh. Yeah. I mean, maybe he flats something for deception every now and then, but uh and if he had a bad ace like ace deuce, I guess he could turn his hand into a bluff on the flop, maybe trying to get you to fold out a small pocket pair or something yeah and then then check behind at some point and hope to to get some calls by by uh, ten yeah, it's interesting. I don't think the ace necessarily nails his range, but it's not a card we're happy to see. It does put up yeah. the diamond redraw, so every now and then a tiny part of the time. You know, he's got, uh, there's another way that he beats us. The pot is pretty small. I tend to agree with your fold, uh, in this spot. Just because- It's definitely turns, thin. Yeah, the turn card's pretty unfortunate. Uh, just the fact that we know that we're calling down if, if it comes safe turn and river, I think is the main thing here. Yeah, plus, plus, uh, if he, 
if you did have a, um, a hand like, well, okay, I, I think um, Ace Jack would have a three bet preflop, but I'm not quite sure about his uh, three betting range out of the big blind. Yeah, it's something maybe. If, it's always hard to tell. Well, I'm sure that he's he's aware of the fact that he should be three. I mean, obviously three betting very lightly versus you, especially because you're probably opening a, a lot of small blinds, right? At least two thirds of them, maybe even more. Yeah. So, uh, but then I don't know if he's a player who can have deception in his range and just flat a big hand here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and keep playing back the video and let's see if we get some more spots with him. What kind of situations come up? Your ace six hand on the right here looks pretty standard. Here's an ace nine on the left. Uh, oh, two hands at once, pretty exciting. Okay, well here's a here's a spot where uh, King Charles takes two to the face preflop. Any ideas on if he's going to have a pretty narrow range here? I know a lot of guys you can put him on hands like pocket eights and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, he. Um, his his stats aren't and really um there there's a a bit of a big gap in 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 the in his stats um like like with the p play guy so he's cold calling some hands I think um and uh, I think yeah they, these will be some suited connectors or, or pockets yeah yeah we're I mean we're expecting him to just go ahead and cap all of his big hands here so yeah we can kind of narrow his range to certain kinds of hands let's go ahead and see the flop. Uh, and Wooch did 3-bet. If King Charles had folded, this is a hand, again, that you probably would have considered capping preflop against N. Wooch. But you um, yes. may have decided not to because you wanted to keep the ace high in your range. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, exactly. Not a, I mean, not like, a preflop, uh, but certainly, I think, worth peeling, getting this great price. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it was just the price that I was peeling for. It was... Um, if I had like a a six, I might have considered folding again. Yeah, I agree with you. The nine being, uh, if we were to hit it, being second pair is very important. Uh, whereas the six, if we hit just being third pair, I think you played the hand fine once it's checked to you, obviously. Uh, here's our first open limp by Agostino that we get to isolate for great justice here. <laughs> Okay, I mean, it's an interesting flop. Obviously, we're C-betting, and we'll see what happens. Check call. So when he goes ahead and check calls this flop, I know we don't have a ton of experience with him, just that he's kind of loose, passive, and bad. What uh, sort of a range are you putting him on when he check calls here? Um, yeah, I think any pair, because he's loose, passive, he won't necessarily um, check raise pairs. Do you think he might be a kind um, of player who's slow playing his big hands pretty often till the turn? Yeah, I think he might, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um then yeah, obviously any spade. Um or diamond you mean, yeah. Uh, a, a, any diamond obviously, yeah. <laughs> sure. And um yeah, I think he might uh, even even check all his his gut shots, uh, um so basically, yeah. I mean, he's he's check calling a fairly wide range here, but uh, yeah. okay, just trying to get an idea. Um, if he's the kind of player who's waiting till the turn pretty often. Let's go ahead and see the turn action here. I do agree with your two barrel here, definitely to try and get him to fold some better hands. Uh, now he pops us. We're pretty worried about that pop, obviously, and we're probably only raising if we hit a straight on the river. Agree? Yeah, and um, the bot is really scary for him to to pop. Because he he might even have us uh, drawing to uh, drawing that yeah yeah I mean I if I hit a pair on the river like Jack probably I would just cry and call uh, yeah yeah and I don't really know if I would be capable of raising and folding if I got three bet if I hit my straight but I probably would uh, yeah that's uh, that's a tough spot then thinking he could be overplaying trips or something uh, talk yeah. briefly about this hand on the right here uh, you isolated this limper fire coral let me go back. Just Okay. Oh, do you want me to start? Yeah. yeah, let's watch the action on the right table here. Uh, mm -hmm. King of hearts, eight of clubs. You ISO the limper. I think it's a thin ISO, but I don't mind it. Uh, mm -hmm. How low are you going here? You're probably folding about king six, right? Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I think I'm folding king six, but I'm opening, opening, uh, or isolating with uh, king seven. And, um, this is specifically because of, um, yeah, Fire Coral, um, having a really low, um, went to showdown, um, stat, which is, uh, only, uh, 33%. Um, and I think I can get him to fold, uh, yeah, ace high and, um, even some low, po- low pairs on on, po- uh, on uh, scary bots. Yeah, we're expecting him to fold on the turn a lot of the time when he hasn't improved. Uh, yeah. Nomar to our left being pretty tight is not going to be three betting us as often as some players. Uh, and which is, you know, obviously aware of what we're doing and is going to be calling a pretty wide range. But mm-hmm. I don't think that should stop us from isolating. Certainly. Uh, yeah. I guess if both blinds were super nitty then we could isolate a little wider. But still, I don't want to go too much wider, just for, for hand strength, obviously. Um, and then let's see how the flop plays out. Pretty good flop for us, obviously. Um, goes bet. Bold peel. Okay, an interesting turn card. I see you're kind of thinking about what to do here, and you decide to bet. Uh, would you have bet here if you had, say, the Ten of, clubs and no, or the ten of Hearts and no pair, the Queen of Hearts? Kind of where do you draw the line? Um, I think, yeah, I think, um, just because of, um, this fire coral guy who, um, doesn't show down that much, I think I have to, um, definitely bet, um, hands without any showdown value here. Um, we're basically to, trying to, or I mean, we have the draw, obviously, but we're basically just trying to bluff him off something better at this point. Yeah. And, um, uh, it might even be for, uh, for, for value to some extent because he, he might have, yeah, one heart and, and just peeling. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, we I usually see him having a hand like queen 10, queen 9, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I definitely don't mind the bet at all. Uh, we have the nut flush redraw, and we may have the best hand. Uh, so you think you're probably two barreling almost your entire range here, even if you don't have a heart? Um, yeah, I think so. All right. Um, just, just because uh, it's against him who really doesn't show down light and... Um, Against other players, I would play it differently, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, let's see what happens. He does peel. We hit a king on the river. Interesting card. I agree with your decision to value bet, and he folds anyway, so it looks like we may have had the best hand all along. Yep. Uh, here's an ace-jack hand here on the left. Let's see if anything develops. And over on the right, I see we have fire coral open limping in here, so I'm very happy with your seat and table selection. Thanks. Okay, Gustino defends here, which I'm assuming is almost any two cards. Yep. Uh, he check calls. He check calls. And he donks. Very interesting. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I think, um, uh, he, he may have ace high. He may have, uh, missed, missed draw just because he's really bad and thinks about, oh, how can I win this pot? Just dunking the river. When I first saw but, this, uh, when I first saw this video, I almost started laughing out loud because I always call here because his line is so stupid, right? Uh, or at least I find it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. But I do almost always lose when I call here. Uh, mm. I do agree with you. We beat a lot of random stuff like busted hearts, uh, a lot of busted straight draws, you know, 10-9, jack-9, whatever, jack-10. Um, yeah. Even rarely, I think he has like a small pocket pair that's been counterfeit or something, right? Or ace-high that he thinks he may... Uh, he thinks, yeah. oh, I have two parries, kick or something like that. Uh, yeah, the, the problem is uh, he he should have um, check raised um, any hand that beats us before that point, but he didn't, so it's really hard to give him a hand that beats us. But <laughs> I maybe shouldn't have said his line is stupid. I don't mean to be derogatory toward anybody watching uh, or anybody in these videos. His line just doesn't make a lot of sense to us, I guess is maybe a safer way of putting it. Uh, we are getting about 6-1. to one. I... I'm certainly not capable of laying this hand down. I'm assuming you're probably considering calling as well. Um. Um. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I I don't have the hand at the moment. Oh, it's about uh, six minutes thirty-three into our first recording. Oh yeah. No, I'm definitely not folding it. Yeah, we call and we get shown the king and the nine, which I don't necessarily think he played very well, but. Uh, we do get the read out of him so far, for one hand at least, that his river donk was a made hand. Uh, yeah. We'll see if we tangle with him anymore. Just a very brief spot. Kind of, Sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm kind of mad at me for not taking this note. Oh, I mean, something you can't often see the first time. Just a quick spot here. In the very next hand, you have 10-6 off in the big blind. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not quite getting the action paused where I want it to. But basically, Enwuch opens, King Charles cold calls, and Gustino calls in the small blind, and you fold. I agree with your fold. What offsuit tens are you calling there, though? Yeah, I think I, I would call 10-7 there. 10 7 is probably pretty close. I think we can agree 10 8 and 10 9 are both really easy calls, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, 10 5, obviously, a fold. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. 10 7, I agree with. I sometimes fold 10 7 because I'm a little bit of a nit, but uh, 10 6 is pretty close to being, I think, a solid fold. Uh, I'm just kind of rambling at this point. I like to. Uh, you know, you see people fold like 8-5, and you're like, oh, would you play 8-6 there, 8-7? So I kind of like to delve into that sort of thing. Um, so like I said, feel free to interrupt me, talk, you know, take some pressure off me having to talk the whole time. Yeah, sure. Looks mm -hmm. like we are just going to see a couple of hands play out here. Okay, we've got 10-4 suited on the left table here. Well, once that gets raised... I think only if, like, the other three people cold called would I even consider playing the hand, right? So yeah, yeah. even then I would probably fold. Well, maybe I'd call. It'd be close. Five three on the left table. Uh, too low to open on the button against Enwooch. What kind of offsuit hands are you opening there? Like 7-6 off, 8-7 off, something like that? Yeah, I think um, I'm uh, going down to... Sometimes seven six off, and I'm not always opening seven six off. Yeah, that's the thing is he's probably defending more than the average. Uh, yeah. He's defending more than King Charles would be, for example. So. Yeah, yeah. And over here on the right, ten three suited. What suited tens are you popping? Um, I think um, ah. Well, 10-7 suited is definitely... Is it? Yeah, 10-7 suited would be an open for me. Yeah, I agree with that. 10-5 suited, uh, probably pretty close. 10-6 suited, pretty close, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I would fold 10-5 suited. I'm not sure about 10-6 suited. Yeah. I'm just going to ask you a lot of little questions like that, keep you on your toes. Sure, sure. Here's another hand we're going to tangle with here on the left. Uh, Gustino open limps it again. We pop it up because we have the ace and the nine, and let's see how it plays out. Okay, check call. This is certainly a promising flop for us. Okay, and he bets here, and you raise. Uh, tell me about your thoughts on the turn raise. Uh, a, would you fold to a three bet? B, do you see more value in calling twice? Kind of tell me what you're thinking here. Um... We've seen him yeah. dunk the river once before. I think this is the first time we've seen him dunk the turn. Yeah. Well, um, I, I assume he might have a ten here, and um, I think he would always um, he would always call down if raised. Um, the problem is that we split with uh, all the aces. Yeah, we are kicking um, doesn't play anymore. Uh, exactly. Do you think he'd play a six this way? Ah, uh, that's difficult to say. Um. Yeah, if he if he does, he he owns me, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing. I the other thing is that with the spade draw on board, and there are a couple, you know, gut shots, nine eight, nine seven, whatever. That mm. uh, if he three bet, we'd probably talk ourselves into a call down. Plus, we're in position, so it's a little easier to play on the river. Uh, yeah. The I thing is, I, I I really rarely um see a three bet um on this turn from from a guy like him. I think that's true. Um, we can almost. Yeah. Not remove 6x from his range, but I think we can reduce the chances that he has 6x just because of the way he's played it. Like, I feel like probably he would check call, check raise a 6, or maybe just check raise the flop. Uh, so if we put his range on, like, flush draws, straight draws, 10x, other aces, I think we are ahead of him enough to, that makes the raise the right play. Uh, yeah. We are we are not sure about uh, how he plays the 6, so it's really thin. Uh, Particularly because we we our kicker doesn't play so. Yeah, that's the thing. Our, I mean, we're chopping with other aces, but we are still getting value from a lot of draws in from 10x. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and play it out. I like I like that thought process. And then he check calls and chop it up. Yep. 
Okay, pretty good hand. I like how you played that turn. I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on it. Okay, on the right table here, Ace, Jack of Hearts. Uh, I'm certainly probably double-barreling this pretty often, and uh, just for value, basically, and to charge all the draws, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about uh, checking the turn, but um, then, again, this... It's clear value bet on the turn. For me, it's just, I mean, yeah, we've got ace high. A lot of worse hands than ace high are going to call. Plus, there are a lot of, you know, the flush draw possibility. There were a lot of little straight draws on the board. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see what's going to happen here. What do you think about um, the ice race with uh, ace six suited from the high check there? I, I definitely agree with it. I mean, for me, I'm open. I ISO raise most hands that I would be opening with, with just a couple of exceptions, and I definitely would have been opening that to begin with, so I think the ISO is perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, is that, are your ISO ranges pretty similar to your opening ranges? Um, I think uh, if if one player limped, I, I open pretty much the same range, just taking away some of the um, no no showdown um Hands, no showdown, no showdown. No yeah, hands, hands with no showdown value, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in general, whether I'm playing full ring or six max, I'm isoing almost anything I'm opening. I agree with you. I take out some of the really crappy aces. Like, uh, I probably wouldn't iso an ace deuce off or an ace three off that I might open. And I sometimes mm -hmm. take out the really small pocket pairs. I feel like a lot of these guys are limping small pocket pairs or bad aces, and I hate just owning myself by, like, isoing a worse hand, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm not uh, like isoing with um, seven six um, offsuit from the button when the cutoff limbs. Yeah, just because I'm. It. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. I probably would iso seven six suited though because I can make a flush. I like making. Yeah, flush. yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, that's sort of my favorite thing at showdown is when someone says, "What were you doing?" I said, "I was trying to make a flush." So. <laughs> All right. So let's see what happens here. King ten off on the left table. Oh, interesting spot. Uh, what do you think about your different choices here? Um, uh, basically, I'm, what I'm hinting at is that I'm not very comfortable with the call, but I wonder if it's got to be close to the right play. Yeah, it's it's really close be, between all all three options. I'm just not, I I didn't um, implement any cold calling in, into my range. I mean, I don't oh. actually. I mean, I'm worried that Oink is going to bust through the door here and start beating. <laughs> <laughs> for not calling immediately, right? But uh, I think we can agree, yeah. like, king eight off would be an obvious fold, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. King queen, easy call. Uh, maybe easy race. maybe three bet, but yeah, you could three bet it for sure. Yeah. Uh, king jack, you're coming into the pot with, probably. King I think nine. I'm... Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I think I'm, um, I'm rather either three betting or, or folding. That is uh, my place... Playing style at the moment, I'm not sure if it's correct, but with any, play, with so. any hand here, or just with these big card kind of hands. Like, what about like pocket fours here, for example? Um, I think um, I'm okay. Sometimes I I might be uh, cold calling uh, a low pocket pair there. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're always three betting or folding, you might be giving up a little bit. You know, a hand like nine eight suited, I would probably want to call here uh, as opposed to three bet or pocket five. I think that depends on on, on the on the oppon opponents to some extent. So if if they are bad, I'm more inclined to cold call. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this guy to our that we have position on the cold caller, Gustino. Obviously, we want to play pots with him whenever possible. Uh, yeah. True. We don't have any stats on the opener here. Uh, the big blind looks small sample, kind of taggy. So yeah, they're going to be coming not, along a fair bit of the time if we call here. Yeah. I think it's got to be close. I certainly don't mind a fold. I just noticed that uh, we didn't talk about it previously, and I thought about it just a few minutes ago. And um, what do you think about three betting? Do you think it's worse than folding or, uh, or better? Or? Uh, for me, I think fold is... I would prefer to fold as my first option. I mm -hmm. wouldn't be very comfortable three betting this. Uh, like I said, I am more nitty than you, so I think mm -hmm. it's interesting that we're working together because... Pretty much all of our coaching sessions go like, "What are you doing? Fold!" And you're like, "But I have King Four." And so, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe we can get some discussion from this one going on the forums. It's actually a spot I'm honestly a little uncomfortable uh, mm. three betting in, but I think three betting is not. A, I mean, it's not going to be a bad option. I just don't think we get anybody out 
And we yeah. are out of position for the whole hand. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's not not the best choice to a three bet there. I just don't think it's either for like pure value. I'd almost rather three bet nine eight suited there than three bet uh-huh. ten off, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Um but yeah, I think certainly there's that's an interesting thing there. Something like pocket fives, pocket sixes, you know, eight seven suited. There's yeah. gotta be some hands that we're gonna call there and not always three better fold, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah these uh, low pocket pairs, um I think they are quite good here for cold calling. We can uh get Oink I'll uh I'll send Oink this video and uh get him to come in, in the thread and tell us how we're all really weak tight. <laughs> I think he might might cold call this, yeah. Um <laughs> On the right here, King Jack off, interesting spot. Uh, I see this new guy to the table here, G, G, and G. Looks like loose passive from the stats, 43, 15 or so. Mm-hmm. Fire Coral ISOs, which is a little worrisome just because he's not raising all that many hands to begin with. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking as far as uh, what kind of range is your three betting here? I'm assuming cold um, calling is probably not an option with King Jack here. Yeah. That's true, yeah. It's either raise or fold. Would you consider think... cold calling any hands in this spot? No. No, definitely not. No hands at all? No hands at all. All right. I, uh, yeah. What about a hand... Uh, I'm just going to give you a lot of trouble. What about a hand like 9-8 suited? Which no, has... I would... I, I would 3-bet. You'd 3-bet 9-8 yeah, suited? I, I would definitely 3-bet 10-9 suited or, or jack-10 suited. I'm, I'm not sure about 9-8 suited. I might fold this. What about pocket fours? Um, I would fold pocket fours. I guess pocket fours are my question hand for every situation. I just ask, what would you do with pocket fours? <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would definitely raise like like sixes and fives. Uh, yeah, goes, I guess fives. So basically, your thought process here is that three betting, getting the blinds out, maybe getting the initial limper out, yeah. means we need to be doing it with a real a really wide range, even if we might be behind uh, behind the fire corals ISO range. It's just too much value for us to pass up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It, it it would be huge if we got, could get Noma and Wooch and GGs and G to fold, yeah. Yeah, definitely a good point. If we get the initial limper to fold, it's a huge victory for us because then we have a lot of, I mean, we've taken the initiative and we have some fold equity versus Fire Coral, who doesn't show down that much to begin with. Yeah. Um. Certainly we could, you know, if we knock him off of ASI on the turn, it's a pretty great scenario for us. Um. So I definitely agree with you about three betting here. Uh, let's see what happens. Obviously nobody's gonna fold because this is six max. <laughs> so everybody calls and we completely whiff. I think the C bet is fine. I don't think there's any value in a turn bet. I definitely agree with you. And we're just waiting for someone to bet so we can fold. Yep. And wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I see you're immediately taking note on him. Perfect. Open limps the hijack with jacks, perfect. And he doesn't even cap. I mean, at least limp re-raise if you're going to do that, right? So. Yeah, yeah. A7, a little bit of a battle with N. Wooch. Pretty terrible flop for our hand. Uh, I can see you kind of moving your mouse around because you're anxious to bet, so you can fold. <laughs> Just a note for the viewers at home, uh, Jay moves his mouse around really rapidly, and for some reason I find it really funny when I'm watching these videos. All right, good hand here on the left with ace-jack. Uh, we defend against N. Wooch. I'm assuming your standard is to check raise this flop with a really wide range, obviously. Yeah. Um, what kind of, what does he have? About 40% steal the attempt to steal or? Um, it's 50, 51%. Oh, it's 51. It's this number here. I mean, he is, uh, he's not on the button, but I think we can assume he has a pretty wide range here still. Yeah. So our plan is just to check raise and then basically depending on what he does, we're looking to get three streets of value here pretty often, right? So I agree, yeah. Alright, so let's play it and see how it plays out. Okay, check raise. I mean he's calling a ton of his range here, obviously. So uh we turn the nuts, bet and call. And river oh boy, you tried to pull an entity. You tried to pull an entity. Uh yeah. We've talked about this hand some already off video. Let's kind of rehash some of it here. Mm-hmm. I was not a huge fan of this attempt to check raise, uh, even though I like doing it in general. Uh, what were you thinking at the time, basically, as far as like what do you want him to value bet and so on? Um, yeah, I 
thought about it um for a while um um yeah well at the at that moment I was um thinking that that he would bet I'd say um any I mean we any king. bet yeah a king or a jack or something right so yeah any any king and any ace um of course I I thought he might have called um only called with a with a with an ace on the turn um, if it's a rather weak ace I'm not sure about that because of the many draws so he might have um raised there to 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 charge uh, my draws I, I'm not sure I agree with you um, some of the time he's probably not raising an ace on the turn Yeah and then I thought okay he might have um so what is he calling um on on this river uh, is he calling with a uh, pocket pass um okay I didn't uh, think uh, about it enough I I think it was just uh, oh I oh I'm making a video. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I definitely make at least one really terrible river check raise attempt every time I'm recording myself play, <laughs> yeah. or terrible like cold cap pre flop with seven eight off or whatever. Okay, perfect. Uh, basically, I feel like his calling range is much wider than his betting range here on the river. Uh, we could have a diamond draw when we check raise the flop. We could have a small pocket pair. We could have six x or a king or a jack, obviously. Uh, some straight draws as well, but a lot of the straight draws either got there or are pretty strong once the ace hits on the turn. Um, I feel like if we do fire this river, basically, he will call with pretty wide range, uh, a lot of pairs, maybe even queen high some of the time if he puts us on, like, busted diamonds or something really low. Uh, but I don't think he would bet a hand like 6x on the river, for example, if we check to him, or uh, maybe if he had, like, pocket sevens or something. So I feel like I would prefer to bet here and just get paid off by a lot of things. What do you think? Yeah, you uh, you definitely um, you definitely convinced me on that. Like you uh, know, hand. puts us on eight seven of diamonds and we check this river. You know, yeah, he, he, there's no yeah. value in him betting. You know, uh, exactly. And I I think um, me betting doesn't say anything about my hand. So he he might even call with po- pocket threes or. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. Any, maybe, any bluff catching hand he has, uh, I assume he played lots. Yeah. Of, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, maybe even queen high, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he calls with queen high often, obviously, but I'm sure, sure but... you played many hands like this versus him, where you check raise eight seven of diamonds and barrel every street, right? Uh, or yeah. you check raise ten nine off and barrel every street. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. given that you're doing that, I think a hand as strong as this, you should go ahead and just and barrel off as well, and and just be really happy when he calls you down pretty lightly. Sure, and he does he does show down quite lightly, uh, quite light, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like this is a great example of just taking advantage of your image, uh, yeah, and expecting to get called down really lightly. But let's go ahead and play it, and uh, interesting spot. Like you said, you did it for the video. Uh, he immediately, I mean, he doesn't have anything obviously compared to a pair. <laughs> uh, he had queen high. No, he didn't. He had pocket, pocket queens. Pocket. Queens, eh? <laughs> pocket queens. Okay, he he was gonna call with pocket queens. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I even thought about uh, thought he would he might he might um, bet these for value. I really thought so. Yeah, that'd be a thin value bet with the ace and king on board. Uh, I think he's capable of it. Uh, I but, think if you check it though, he wouldn't he wouldn't pay off. So we're still getting only the one bet out of him. That's true. Yeah. The thing is also that okay. even if we do get the check raise off. The the range of hands he has that both bet and call the check raise are pretty narrow. Yeah. Uh, and so when we when we bet and he just calls the one bet, then his range is fairly wide. So. Yeah. Uh, I suppose there's always the really rare chance that we get to bet three bet the river if he's waited till the river to raise like ace queen or something or a good ace. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's a little unlikely, but. Uh, yeah, sometimes it will happen. Um, this hand on the left here, we opened a seven in the small. Uh, looks like we turned the nuts, and yeah, he just folds. Okay. Yeah, interesting spot. Like I said, I always make at least one goofy play every time I'm making a video. So, <laughs> uh, on the left, really quickly, there you had the king four of hearts. I agree with the fold. What suited kings are you three betting there? Even versus Gus, who's kind of loose passive. Um. Think well, yeah, king, king, king six, king five. I might, I might three bet king five. King five suited, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean king for me, suited. definitely king eight, king seven suited are three bets, pretty much automatic. King five, yeah. king six, I think that's where you're a little laggier than me. 
<laughs> um, we're about to get into a pretty sick spot here on the right table, so I'm going to pause the video and tell me what's going through your mind when you see pretty much everybody call here, <laughs> 10 bets cold, pre-flop. Yeah, um, well, first of all, um, we got the UTG race from Noma5. Um, who pretty, I'd... Tight, pretty tight player. Exactly, yeah, I've, I've got almost 3,000. 3,000 hands on him, and he only raised 18%, and now we've got the UTG race from him, who seems to be a very ABC player. So I think um, this is a very tight range, and if he got an ace, I think he might have me dominated quite a, quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, he's probably opening ace-10. I don't know about yeah. ace-9, but most hands he's opening there, we're not doing super well. I mean, he probably opens jack-10 suited and stuff like that, but if he has an ace, I agree with you that we're usually in trouble for sure. Yeah, yeah, and then we got um, the warrior, the warrior um, who doesn't seem to be a bad player, um, and I think he he recognizes um, this too. So um, his three bet shows more strength um, than it would show against well Enwuch. Yeah, or against like say if you opened or if Enwuch opened. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got to assume. Yeah, good point. He's 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 aware of Nomar having a pretty tight range here. Exactly. Uh, G, G's, and G calls because he has two cards. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's back to us. And I think, I personally think all three op three options here are fairly close in value. Uh, yeah. Is at least my gut feeling, and maybe we can get some discussion about this. I'm kind of looking for Oink to come in and start beating me over the head again here. <laughs> uh, I always just joke around with Oink. Don't take any offense, sir. Um, I don't often call in this spot. I think calling here is viable. Uh, what do you think? I don't know that I want to cap. I mean, what hands are an auto cap for you here? Yeah, well, I think I I would cap um, ace, ace queen and wouldn't think twice about it. Yeah, ace queen off. Obviously, ace queen suited. What about ace yeah. suited? Yeah, I think I would cap this too. So it's re really really thin. How about ace ten suited? Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, I, th I think yeah, ace ten is, is the cap for me just just because it's multi way and suited and ace yeah. high. So you it's... make a flush or a straight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about pocket fours? <laughs> <laughs> no, pocket fours are, are fold for me definitely. Pocket fours are fold. What about call well, you don't even have pocket fours here. What about calling pocket fours potentially? Um, yeah, that's that's. Um, yeah, that couldn't be bad. But, uh, oh, I I don't know about pocket fours again, so I, I I would I would call I would tend to call pocket pocket sixes. I think. Yeah, that's true. Pocket fours are just ugh, they come up all the time because I bring them up all the time. What a crappy hand, pocket fours. Uh okay, so we're we're auto capping ace jack suited and ace ten suited. Yeah. And ace queen off. Uh, obviously, like ace nine off would be an insta fold here. Ace ten yeah. off probably fold. Ace Jack off is just really right in that really close zone for me. Uh, yeah. There are some pocket pairs here that you would cold call and not cap, but you're probably capping what nines and up for sure, maybe eights and up. Yeah, yeah, I think eights and up. It's just an interesting spot. I I saw some merit in calling and folding here. I don't see a lot of merit in capping. Uh, I don't think we get Nomar to fold very often. Is the thing if we capped. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's so tight. Uh, maybe if it were Enwooch or you opening and you had, you know, like a... What do you open under the gun? Like 20% or something? Or not 20, but 18 maybe? I don't know. I'm not quite sure about this uh, about this set. But you're opening a lot of hands under the gun that you would yeah. you would fold if it were capped. Yeah. That's just an interesting spot. Maybe I've kind of talked it out. Uh, it's interesting that Ace-Queen is an auto-cap and Ace-Jack gives us so much trouble as to what to do. Yeah. Buff. I think folding is certainly the safest play. Queen 10, Queen 10 left table looks pretty standard. Uh, definitely agree with two barrel that you're probably going to do here to try and get him off of... Uh, well, do you think he folds ace high ever on this board, on this turn? Um... At first, uh, I wasn't even thinking. I mean, I guess you're two barreling so wide of a range here that two barreling queen ten off is not bad. Uh, uh, what uh, what do we want him to fold here on this turn? Though is the thing. Yeah. I mean, ace mm. high ideally, right? But uh, if yeah, Jack calls this flop with ace high, I don't think this turn is going to scare him off. Might be even better to 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 check behind and um, think about calling. I didn't even. 
Uh, it's possible. I, I mean, I didn't even think about this the first time. Uh, to those of you watching at home, uh, Jonas and I both watched these, you know, watched the video before we decided to record. So we kind of had an idea of what hands to talk about. I don't think either of us thought about this hand the first time through. Uh, yeah. Well, um, what do you think about about checking behind and, and calling a safe river? So, uh, deuce or three or... We've got only a few hands on him, and so far he looks pretty tight. But, I mean, that's too small of a sample to be worth anything. Uh, yeah. I just, I agree with you that at game speed, and you just heard me a minute ago saying, oh, well, obviously we two-barrel here. But, I mean, what, what do we want to happen when we two-barrel? I mean... Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll fold. I mean, he'll fold a lot of hands worse than ours, but I don't know any better hands that he's really folding at all. Is the thing. Yeah, and he might. Okay, he might call with um, with uh, say the flush draw. Yeah, I mean, we could be getting value from nine eight or something. I agree. Exactly. But uh, I wonder if even checking behind and check folding a lot. And of he, okay. He might, um, yeah, he might fold uh, six outers. Like yeah, like yeah, he like could have a queen, six queen ten with a with a diamond or something. Yeah, that's true. He, he could have a queen six uh, or, or some kind of draw. Yeah, I, I, okay, I didn't uh, notice my hands on not queen ten obviously, but but a six out like jack jack nine with the diamond. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. Let me back it up a little more here. Make sure you get the pot size right. Oh, back it up too far. Okay, so when he checks to us on the turn, it's going to be what sixty three dollars. But yeah, um, he checks and we check behind. He bets the river. It's going to be eighty-three dollars to us to call twenty. Mm. So like four to one. Mm. I don't even know that we need to call this river to try and snap off a bluff. Uh, yeah. Because we only have a few hands with him, he seems pretty tight. I think our hand is actually weaker than. Well, would you ever value check this turn with ace high, or would you bet all ace highs? Um. <laughs> I might. Um. Uh, I. I think I would. Um. I would value check if it. Uh, if it was. Uh, if it wasn't. Um. Two diamonds on the board. That's so if it was. There are some straight draws possible now. Unlikely, but possible with the five seven out there. Yeah, and if it was like seven king. Um. Seven, but but uh, not two diamonds, but uh, just a seven of clubs. Yeah, rainbow. Or then something. I might. Yeah, rainbow exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, uh, we both were just immediately like, oh, bet the turn. But now it's kind of like, well, what do we want to happen? But then it sort of brings up the, well, are we ever value checking ace high here? Is ace high really different than queen high? Are there enough hands in his range that we're trying to charge? I mean, ace high is different than queen high, sure, but uh, as far as the mirror, not quite, not a lot. Yeah, different, okay. but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just because of um. Just because he he won't ever value bet the ace on on the river if we check behind and he has it, that's yeah. I I wonder if I had I wonder if value checking even with ace high planning to call on the river if the river's like a deuce or something, uh, hmm. and maybe folding queen high. Um, I guess they're mostly the same hand. I don't know if he would value bet ace high into such a small pot if he had an ace high on the river. Uh, and I think. I think the the call on the end isn't necessarily good. Yeah, uh, the either with, is uh, be tiny is the thing. Yeah, it's it's tiny, and what is he supposed to have on this on the spot and and dunk the river? Yeah, it would it would be it would be just terrible for our psyche if he donked a high on the river and we snapped with queen high. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he he could have a pocket pair often enough, or yeah, that's or just true. a multi pair. I think he'll certainly be able to value bet pocket fours, pocket sixes, something like that on the river. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe, what do you think about checking behind this turn and folding most rivers? I think maybe that's an interesting idea we hadn't thought of. Yeah, I think it's it's the best play, actually. Yeah. Let's put that down, guys. Uh, anybody watching this video, please talk about that hand. Uh, if you reply in the thread, we're interested to see what you think. Uh, let's go ahead and play on to the next hand. I think as played, obviously, the bet fold is certainly correct. Uh, not much yeah. question about it. Okay, and so let's just... Looks like we've got a little bit of a break before the next hand. How are you doing so far? You feel pretty good about this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's fun. This, this is it's fun. It's pretty exciting. I hope the video comes out well. Yeah. Everyone has been, uh, Entity and all the guys have been telling me to make videos for so long, and I've been putting it off, so. 
Finally, I'll get out into the public domain. Wow, the milestone hands are being dealt. Did you win Seven any? Best. Did you win any milestone hands? Milestone bonuses? No, no. no. <laughs> I think sadly so. death. I want to say that uh, I play limit, or somebody did uh, on the forums, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and guess 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 the two. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Here's a quill cool spot here on the left, five four off. Uh, looks like you're gonna fold. Let me make sure you fold. Yeah, you fold. Okay. Uh, what are you immediately calling there? Eight seven off for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about um, eight six off or seven six off? Um, yeah, seven six off. I'm calling and eight six off. Ooh, yeah. It looks like the well, player desire is going to end up maybe being taggy. Although again, we still don't have enough sample size. But uh, yeah, obviously the fact that Gustino Gustino comes along and we have position on Gustino and really want to play pots with him. Uh I might even call five four here. Although I think it's pretty thin. Hmm. Uh Six five. Then you are calling. Six five off. Are you calling? Close. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, six I five think. is is maybe maybe five four is too thin, but I think six five seven six is kind of around the border for us. And uh, with the with the one gappers, which which one would do? Would you call? How low would you go? Um, eight six definitely. Seven five. Yeah. Not sure about. Uh, I think yeah, I think I would fold uh, seven five, but. Call eight eight six. I tend to talk myself into a lot of calls here. Basically, if the you know the small blind cold caller is really bad, uh, yeah. kind of assuming that I can make up for it post flop. I've never really actually looked or like done any you know filters or anything in Poker Tracker to see if I'm actually doing okay in these spots. But I kind of just feel like it can never be bad to have a decent playableish kind of hand with a bad player in there. Uh, mm, I agree. Yeah. I think even. The connectors are easier to play than the one gappers. Like six five off might even be easier to play than eight six off or something. I guess they're about the same as far as playability. Uh, just kind of want to talk about what your calling range was there. Not a very common spot, or I mean a common sure. spot, but not a very big deal. Sure, sure. And let's see if you flop the nuts. Wow, you would have flopped the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even remember that until I just looked. I bet you're about to lose a huge pot though. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oh yeah, you're about to lose. you lose on the river always. <laughs> Ow. Um, quick spot here on the right table. I see you have king seven off. Um, did I catch that in time? Yeah. I agree with the fold. Are you ever limping like king nine here? King ten probably uh, limping. Yeah. No, I no no no. Uh, I I would uh I would raise them. Yeah, I would raise king ten definitely and king nine. All right. What about no. king, king nine? Yeah, king nine might be limp. Yeah. Like, I think uh, N. Wooch is not folding anything playable once he sees us pop here. So then yeah. it's just like, is our pop for value or close to it, right? Uh, although King we ten. probably knocked Nomar out. Uh, yeah. King 10, I think you're right, is a pop. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, this is one of these spots where when when it's too limpus, where I, I really adjust my, my uh, ice wing range, yeah. Are you over limping a lot of, like, suited stuff here and, like, you know, pocket twos or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, King Seven Off is just such an ugly looking kind of hand. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of a weird spot, I thought. You know, King Nine, you're thinking about raising, so King Seven may be playable, but I don't know. King Eight, I might limp here. I don't know if that's right. Yeah, King Eight and King Nine might be cool to limp. Yeah, I, I for some reason I think King Eight is a much better hand than it actually is. I don't know why. I always play it. <laughs> it's my, it's not my lucky hand. You know how guys have lucky hands, they always play. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> obviously we would have lost a big pot on the left here to Gustino with the king with the uh, queen nine. Um, yeah, okay, and let's see what's happening here. Uh, so this is a limped pot on the right. Everybody's checking. I kind of mystified as to what anybody has that they're playing correctly. <laughs> ah, pocket twos with a heart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, rivering fire corals, pair of queens, top pair. Um, okay, I mean, I I love this ISO here with ten eight suited. Obviously, I think it's pretty standard. Um, let's see what happens. And you have a playable hand on the left too. This could get exciting in a hurry. Pretty sure we flop the nuts on the right table. And just value bet every street, right? Is your thought process here? 
Nice hand. Definitely. I see the nines you cold capped here on the left. Uh, are you cold capping? How low are you cold capping here? Sevens? Would that be close for you? Um, I think just because. Oh, yeah. Okay. The 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 thing is, uh, Gastino isn't um isn't really aggressive pre-flop. So his three bet is um well he would cold call mo most hands I think. So um his three bet shows some kind of strength. I don't know if he's doing it randomly or if he's uh, uh three betting is better range. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but uh, it's not like I agree with the cap. I mean, A for value. B sometimes we knock out this guy Desire here. Yeah, yeah uh, good enough. We knock out his King Ten off or something. That's great for us. So. Yeah, so I think um, I might cold cap with uh, sevens. Yeah. Sevens. And what about the uh, famous pocket fours? Probably gonna have to lay it down this one time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, tight, tight lay down for you, I know. And um, regarding the the ten eight hand on on the right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you if you got it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think it was it was totally standard. What do you think? Yeah, just um. Just um, regarding the the turn, if we get uh, check raised on the turn um, with the uh, seven missing, what do you think uh, uh, we do? We have top pair uh, and a kicker, but um, wow, that'd be pretty um, tough. Uh, I don't yeah. think we've seen this guy check raise the turn yet, have we? Uh, no. He just we haven't. He just had top pair last hand, but on a monotone board and played it very passively. Yeah. I would certainly consider. It's tough because whenever I ISO thinly like this and then flop a good hand, I'm I sort of get kind of married to the hand and I want to you know get to showdown with it. But yeah, I think if he check raised the turn, it's it's a straight pretty often, right? Or hands were drawing dead to like sets or something. Yes, but but then again, I think he uh, would he would uh, dunk a seven on the on the turn often yeah, if he had it. I guess he might. I don't, but, I don't but know. Then, he might he might be able to be thinking like oh this guy is a big hand like you know a big they always put you on aces right oh he has aces he'll bet the turn <laughs> yeah and then check raise yeah I, I agree don't know if he could ever have a big pocket pair like queens or something and decide to check raise the turn in which case then we do have some outs against but uh, I think if you fold well, the turn when you got check raised it couldn't be bad yeah I don't think he he does it that often I I I don't know if he ever does it. Yeah, I mean, if he were more kind of spazzy player, like 50-20 or, you know, obviously yeah. the stats haven't converged, but if he had a higher aggression factor, although his aggression factor is, I guess, kind of high for his VPIP. Uh, yeah, what we've seen so far, he seemed really passive, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are this... certain players I'm never folding against here, and there are certainly yeah. players where if I'm check-raised, I'm just always screwed, so. Yeah. What uh, would you pro what would you have done if he check-raised, do you think? Yeah, I, I'm really not sure. I think um, let's ask people to, to talk about this hand in the in the forums as well. I think folding has to be considered for sure. Yeah. Uh, it it might it might be a W T F call. I don't know. Just sorry. because I, 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 I have no idea what he's. It might be a call. Check raising. Sorry. Uh, you were breaking up on me a little. Did you say you probably just call just to kind of see what he has sort of? No, no, I, I, I was say, saying um, it might be a WTF call down. Yeah, I. But um, just, just, just because I have no idea what he's check raising, uh, if it's always the seven or. Yeah, if he's if checking he... ace five of diamonds or something, that and we fold, that's a disaster for us. So. Uh, exactly. Exactly. That's what I mean. Uh, I, I certainly think calling down. Maybe we can agree that folding might be slightly the best play, but we would never be able to do it. Uh. I, for one, would yeah. probably call down. I don't want to give the impression that I would fold, but I think folding might be considered. So. Yeah, I think that's correct, yeah. Um, anyway, back to these pocket nines here on the left, where you just know we're about to lose a huge pot, because that's how it always happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so already on the pot, already in the flop, the pot is 132, so six and a half bets, right? Six and a half big bets, 13 small bets. And we get donked into right away. Uh... <laughs> My first instinct here was to raise, and then after thinking about it for a while, I wasn't really sure what to do. Uh, what are you thinking about this flop here? Um, first of all, I think uh, Gaston um, has the ace here like, like 90% of, yeah, like of the time. Yeah, a lot of the time. Yeah. 
I mean, um, then I think one, I don't think we can fold at all. I mean, we've got not yeah. qu- not quite what we want just for the two outer, but we also have the backdoor straight draw. And uh, exactly. Yeah, I do agree with you that he probably has an ace a lot of the time. I think he could also be leading out even a bigger pocket pair than ours, just because that's what he does, you know? Like, he has... A lot of guys will just auto-lead out jacks here, even if they get capped pre flop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he, he, might have, he might have the 8 and think, like, oh, I have the 8. I, I'm a... I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to make but... I'm gonna make JB Steve fold 9s right now. <laughs> yeah. I... I <clears throat> I'm not really sure, and and getting Desiree to to fold would would be a success. So raising has some. Yeah, um, and even if we can get think... Desire or whatever this person's name is to fold, I mean, if we pop yeah. here and they yeah. fold anything, it's good for us. Kings, king, queen, whatever, you know, jack ten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it just seems a little spewy to me. I mean. Yeah. I guess it's sort of a classic example of like, to me at least, huge pot. Our hand. May probably not be good, but we can knock out some better stuff behind us, maybe get a free card. You know, if we pop and he calls here and we turn, you know, a five or a seven, we can probably check behind. So, uh, yeah. or, or ten, right? So, uh, or a nine. I guess there are, there are a fair number of turn cards that help us here. Uh, this is another hand. I, you had a lot of good hands in this video where I don't think either of us really knew what to do. Yeah. Um, so oh. let's see what happened here. Yeah, well, I... Okay. I see your mouse went to raise for a sec, and then you decided to call. Uh, yeah. I don't hate calling, certainly. I'm just trying to decide if I think raising might be a little better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the turn fold is fine. You just know this hand is not going to get shown down either, which is the more frustrating. Yeah. True, true. And, I mean, what do we put desire on? King-queen, maybe, or something? That made one peel and then picked up a gut on the turn? Something like that. I have actually no idea what he's calling twice here, and it's it has to be king. I think uh, that does he call a king's flop? It would be kind of bad, wouldn't it? I guess I don't really like his peel if he peeled with king queen there. Although he has to think the pot is huge. Maybe I'll pick up a king or a queen or a Broadway card on the turn. Uh, and and he can't he can't really fold a pocket pair if he. Yeah, if that's he calls the thing. He's the almost turn. getting uh he's almost getting out. For his two outer too, if he has a pocket pair. So I think he's peeling. Yeah, but yeah, then again, he can't he can't really fold if he's calling this turn. Yeah, I don't think he should have folded any pairs on the river. I agree with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I guess king queen maybe something like that. Yeah, it had, Interesting had to be king. Yeah. Yeah, that's another hand where I think raising might be. If we had sevens, I think we can almost fold the flop there, or maybe just call and not think about raising because we don't have second pair, we have third pair. But uh. Nines make a little difference, I think, just because we mm-hmm. did all the, the 8x hands. And we might be good against Gustino. Some yeah, and uh, it's time. possible we're good against Gustino. It's possible we can knock out a better hand behind us uh, against yeah. Desire. That's an interesting spot. I uh, hope you guys comment on that some in the forums. Uh, looks like we got them pocket queens here on the left, and uh, we have an open complete of the small here by Gus. Uh... I think this, I mean, tell me about the hand. It's pretty standard so far, right? Um. Yeah, I mean, you've spent the street, yeah, so. Um, I'm not quite sure. Oh, uh, we're on about uh, 1745 into your copy. We have pocket queen. 1745? Uh, on, on my copy of the thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've, I've got it, yeah. Yeah, pocket queen. So, uh, he, he, com- he, yeah. you raise, and then you just bet every street. Uh, sure. And then he power donks the river. Uh, I agree with your raise here, and just cry and call a three bet, I guess. Um, well, maybe we could cap even. I don't know. Yeah, I think about. Uh, I, I think I, I would cap. I think I would probably cap because screw him, right? He he thinks he ha- he has a nine. He thinks he has the nuts. So, exactly. and he did show up with the ace ace high here. It looks like. Well, that's the first time we've seen him make a river donk without a specific made hand. The first couple times he had a made hand, he might have thought it's yeah. betting for value. I guess. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought. Um, <clears throat> just because um, his donks were strong the hands before that, and now he might have thought, uh, well, my my SI is the nuts on this board. <laughs> yeah, and donking for he this, Yeah, maybe he thinks he's chopping or something, so he calls down. Uh, yeah. 
So we're kind of getting a pattern from him that turn and river donks are usually, you know, st strongish type of hands, made hands. So, uh, and I didn't the note. Well, I mean, I'm not faulting you. I didn't uh, see it the first time either. So, uh, but you know, now if you play against him tomorrow or something, now you'll know. So. All right, looks like we're going to have uh, about 20 seconds of pause before a hand comes here. Uh, you're probably pitching this against Charles, right? What, uh, that 8-3 suited? What are you calling there? Maybe 8-5 suited, something like that? 8-4 suited? Um, um, yeah, I'm calling 8-5 suited, I think. 8-5 yeah. suited, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, 8-5 suited and 8-6 and eight, eight, off suit, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. I eight four suited's probably close. Uh mm -hmm. you can make a straight and a flush, so plus I mean we're getting such a great price just from him opening the small. But uh Yeah. Alright guys, we're back on. We had a little technical difficulty. We were talking about this Jack Nine hand here. Um went under the gun limps. Let's see if I can find it again on the video here. There we go. And, uh, Jay, what are you thinking about, uh, what would you raise here? Jack 9 suited for sure, Jack 10 off probably? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it was really close and I was basically, uh, not ice racing, um, because of, uh, I think because of Enwood being kind of lag, um, and, um, 3 betting me kind of white because he, uh, notices me ice racing white, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think if Enwooch were, you know, another kind of tighter, like 25-18 tag, then you could probably yeah. get away with popping here, not worrying about being uh, ISO 3 bad as much. Yeah, exactly. So definitely agree with that. Um, let's see here. And then nothing much going on on the other table right now. I'm actually going to scroll ahead just a few seconds to the next hand, because I know there's kind of a pause here. Sure. Okay, we've got Ace-9 off under the gun, which we've just popped on the left table. That's the hand I wanted to see. Um, okay, standard C-bet, obviously, versus this guy. Um, and then he takes his special donk the turn line again. <laughs> yeah. Um, and bets the river. Now, this is... Well, the third or fourth time he's taken this line against us, and most of the time it's been some kind of made hand. Sure. Uh, we obviously have to peel the turn here, in my opinion, with the, the flush draw and the overcard, right? So uh, I don't think that's an yeah. issue. It's just kind of what do we do on the river, right? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, well, I think in retrospective, I could have, I could have find, found a fold. I could have find find a fold here. Could have, could have found a fold, yeah. Could have found <laughs> right there. Yeah. I could have found a fold here. Yeah. Just uh, just because of the note I should have already taken, so um, he dunked strong, and I think most of the time he has got something. Yeah, it's too bad it took us so many hands to figure this out. I think uh, if this were happening now at game speed, we could make a fold here with the ace nine. But as yeah. is, the line looks so goofy. It's easy for us to convince ourselves he has like king club ten or something like that that we beat, yeah. you know, or king club nine, whatever. Um, yeah. So I would probably pay off two versus an unknown. Uh, your ace jack, I think you just three bet is totally standard, right? Yeah. Right table. Yeah, this thing on the right looks pretty standard. Looks like we just turned the nuts. Oh, and what did he show here on the left? He showed top pair of queens. So he check called donk donk with top pair. If he does it another time, I want you to fold though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh seven six off on the right table here. This is one where I disagreed with you. Uh I would probably have called here and I saw you raised. Yeah. Basically, I don't think. I mean, Nomar is somewhat tight, but uh, I still think he's calling pretty wide range in that spot. What do you think? Okay, I just I just noticed um a thing I didn't notice before. Um, it isn't even Nomar sitting at this table. Oh um, wow, anymore. you're right. It had yeah. Nomar stats, but it's someone else's person. I didn't really I didn't see it either. Exactly. So Poker Tracker didn't switch it. Um, oh, you're betrayed by Poker Tracker. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I was just uh, I was just uh, raising because of uh, Noma being tight and and uh, Fire Coral being 
not being so unbound. I it guess was, that's a good point, is that Nomar's probably still folding about half the time or something, right? So it can't be bad to race. Yeah. Uh, I would just assume that he's probably, maybe this is a bad assumption, that he's probably solid enough to be knowing what you're doing and calling a pretty wide range. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's not like it's an Wooch or like a laggy kind of guy. So I think you're right that you don't have as much to be worried about. But yeah, yeah. now it's against an unknown. I think yeah. we have to assume the unknown might be looser than Nomar, just because Nomar's tighter than average. So now that we know it's an unknown, does that change your play maybe more to a complete? Definitely. I, I would always complete against an unknown or any uh, average player. So uh, then as played, I think your call down is okay, and we just get shown running two pair, which sucks. But uh, I think yeah, you can be bluffing enough stuff, yeah. Yeah, and it was really draw heavy and couldn't get myself to fold a pair there. Yeah, I don't mind, especially because you raised pre and... It's a semi-blind battle anyway, you know, and you have a pair yeah. and a draw, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, 8-7 here on the left, I think, is... Uh, well, it's a standard open on the button. Looks like... Well, let's see, there's A6 in here on the right. Oh, that's interesting. How low are you going for 3-betting there with suited? Maybe Ace-9 suited, Ace-8 suited? Yeah, I think... Well, again, he's uh, only opening 12%, but uh, you never know with these 50-12 guys what they are opening, so it's probably not uh, the very top of their range. Yeah, I I probably wouldn't be able to help myself from 3-betting like Ace-9 suited immediately or Ace-8 suited. But, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely 3-betting Ace-9 suited and Ace-8 uh, suited. I think I'm not laying this down either. I think your fold is is a good solid fold versus his range. I mean, our hand is pretty. It looks pretty because it's suited, but it's still really often dominated. So. Yeah. And then uh, Jack Eight on the right here, King Do suited on the left. Uh, well, that makes it much easier, but it'd be a call anyway. What do you know about this guy on the left here, G Money? Do you have any play against him? Um. Looks like he's like thirty-five, sixteen over, kind of a small sample. Yeah, he seems um, rather rather bad, but I don't know. I don't know anything more about this. Uh, I think um, yeah, he. I think I've played some with him. I recognize the avatar, but yeah, not a lot of info. And then uh, yeah, this king queen of clubs hand, I think so far has been standard three bet pre flop for value. You got to bet the flop, bad flop, deal with your two back doors, and then just fold the turn. Uh, yeah. This guy on the right table here, to our left, UCI man, looks like a lag from the stats we have on him, 55-29. Definitely. Uh, so I think this is perfect here with this 8-7, now that we know he's a... Did he just leave the table in the middle of the hand? Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he called as big and then left the table. That's weird. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with not raising then, given that he's loose and laggy. And were you going to... Induce on that river there, or yeah, yeah, all, all draws basically missed, uh, which could have yeah. gotten there on, on the river, and I think uh, yeah, he he was that passive that he might even check behind a better hand. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a bit. I agree with you. It's a bit finish of a value bet, and he does check behind some stuff. So yeah, that's queen jack and diamond hand is pretty standard here. Um, for those of you guys watching at home, we're gonna try and just sort of. When we don't have a big hand to talk about, we're just going to keep talking about the previous hand and stop pausing all the time. Hopefully save you guys a little bit of time. Uh, I agree with you that it's kind of a combo of hopefully trying to induce a little bit from a missed draw, hopefully not getting value town quite as thinly by him as we would by some guys. Kind yeah. of a combo. I wouldn't hate a bet, obviously, either, just because we have a bear and he seems kind of bad. Yeah. Uh, we did see him uh, check holding big hands before, so that yeah, was a factor, yeah. 9-7 suited here on the right. This is one of my favorites of all time. Uh, spades I prefer, but hearts are my second best. <laughs> hearts make the most flushes, don't yeah, you? Yeah, know? hearts, hearts flushes are the best flushes. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure you're about to check raise and barrel here, which yeah. is one of my default lines a lot of the time, so I don't have any problem with it. You said yeah. and it's pretty showdown bound, yeah? So. Yeah, that's the reason why I wasn't quite sure about this hand afterwards, but I think it's the... Got some merit to check race there. Yeah, I mean, he showed up with a side, which is kind of, as far as for me, his, his call down range. Uh, I mean, I think we might be able to get him off king high or even queen high some of the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
it's not just the ASIs we're targeting. Like, obviously, if he folds ASI, we're very happy, but, uh, yeah. I think something like Queen 10, King 10, you know, even 10 9, not that we can put him on 10 9 that often, but those kind of hands, you know, 10 7 or whatever, uh, yeah. Maybe he folds a small pocket pair, but I doubt it. Uh, and basically anything he folds is going to have been better than our hand, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, what I've, uh, what I I found uh, interesting is um, the concept um, whether to uh, to check raise uh, to be more inclined to check raise here if the eight was uh, an eight of clubs. So if this was uh, uh, suited uh, too suited too suited board, um, yeah. Or if I was uh, to be rather inclined if it was uh, not that draw heavy so that he couldn't put me on on draws. So. The, the one factor, if we got more fold equity, if the draw hits, uh, or if he couldn't put us in draw, so what do you think about this? I think I, I agree with you, first of all, that when there's, like, two suited on the flop, they always just put you on the flush draw, and they're going to try to call down if they can. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, say, the flop was the eight of clubs here. I don't know if the turn rolls off the five of clubs, if he's going to get away from his hand, though, is the problem, mm. because I know that... I know we're not supposed to like change our reads during a hand, and I don't know in which personally. Um, I'm sure he puts you on a wide range here, not just flush draws, obviously, but a lot of gut draws and so forth, and even small pairs that he probably has a fair number of outs against mm. uh, with his, his one over and maybe two overs. Yeah. Even if the turn rolls off a club, I think there are still enough hands in your range, like the gut shot or like the straight draws, that he probably will still consider calling down ace high and might call down anyway. Mm. So my personal hunch is it doesn't change our fold equity a lot, Unless it came running clubs, right? But uh, that's not very statistically likely that we can really count on on the flop, I think. Or well, if, if the club hit and then the river was like a queen, he would probably fold. Yeah, or like if it came, you know, running 5-6 or something, or running 5-7 or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just horrible looking for him. But if it comes like five of clubs and then the river came like another, like this four of spades, I think he would... I mean, at least me in his situation, I would think, okay, well, I still beat a lot of stuff, right? So Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I do agree with you, though, that that's why it's so great if you just check raise, like, pocket twos on this flop some of the time, or 4x, yeah. uh, especially if it's flush draw. They always put you in a flush draw, and you can just really value town people sometimes with small pairs, because I agree. you're using flush draw as kind of like a defense or kind of disguise for your hand, yeah. cover for your hand. Uh, uh. Uh, we had a big hand here on the left, <laughs> ace-7. <laughs> which you and I have argued about a little bit. We're going to go back and play it really quickly. Um, King Charles opens the button, I believe. Uh, Gus calls because he has two cards, so we call. Uh, would you ever pitch any ace-ax hands in this scenario on the left, or are you calling all your ace-ax hands? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I think I'm calling any ace-ax, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind calling any ace-ax. Sometimes uh, if the guy opening is pretty... Although he's opening on the button, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's if the it. open came from under the gun, I might consider pitching some ace x hands sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it looks like, once again, I blazed right through the decision I wanted to talk about. Basically, Gus dunks out on this flop. Uh, the action's on you. You elected to raise. Give me some of your thought process here as far as calling versus raising and so on. Yeah, I I think um, my thought process was like, um, well, again, I, I didn't uh, took quite into account that Gus <laughs> dunk strong. I, I didn't even catch that read at any point of the game, I think. So, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. I've seen him dunking, dunking total air yet. Yeah, exactly. So um, what I what I thought is that I am some some, some of the time I'm ahead of um, Gus and um, that I certainly um, can fold out many of King Charles' hands if I raise immediately. So um, I think he, he can... He can fold uh, like king queen there or um, some of these hands um, if faced with uh, two small bets. Yeah, so hands that we're probably we're probably ahead of, but uh, yeah. but I have six clean outs against like king queen, queen yeah. jack, jack ten, whatever. I don't think he's ever folding ace x with two good overs and like if he has ace queen or ace ten, he's got the gut and two overs. I don't think he's gonna fold. I agree. Uh, I don't think he's ever folding pocket eights, for example. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And Basically trying, and also, I mean, if the turn breaks off, are you taking a, assuming we fold out King Charles and the turn breaks off, like say the turn's a nine, yeah. are you taking a free card versus Gus if he checks, or are you yeah, betting again? No, I think I'm taking a free card. 
Yeah, I think all those things in mind, like, like I certainly don't think calling the flop is bad at all. No, I definitely. think all these combined, I kind of like the raise, though. Like, we might knock out King Charles' six-outer. Mm. Uh, we might get a free card versus Gus. A lot, obviously, if we... You're probably value betting an ace on the turn, right? Bet fold it. Well, would you check behind an ace, or would you value bet fold it? No, I, I would value bet it. And, uh, again, I could hardly imagine Gus... Um, Check raising me, um, just because he's always donking when he hits. So that's the thing. Yeah, he just never seems to check raise. He always donks. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's kind of an interesting spot, a cool spot to raise. Um, and plus, plus we got the the wheel draw and the the seven could make a straight two. So I don't know. Yeah, like you know, threes are are good cards for yeah, us. Aces that's... are okay cards. Sevens are okay. Yeah. Sixes are okay. Yeah. Um. And it, we also buy the button if we can knock King Charles out, which is always good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not that that helps us against Gus, because he always donks into us anyway. He never lets <laughs> us take cards. But uh, that was a cool spot for a raise. Hopefully we can get some discussion about that in the forums. Let's see how the hand plays out. We pop. King Charles does cold call, I'm assuming. Well, wow. Hmm. So we get power donked. He calls again. I mean, what are we putting King... Oh, well, well, I guess we'll get to see. I thought King Charles folded for some reason. Gus obviously shows us the nuts, which... I mean, he played okay, I guess, considering how he plays hands. What yeah. are we going to put King Charles on? Like, ace-queen or something? I don't think I've seen what he has yet. Um, ace-six. Okay. Yeah, definitely an ace, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think he can fold that hand, even if when we race, obviously, so... Yeah. And, I mean, I think... It's sort of a silly hand how it played out because we pretty much know what Gus has, but I don't think we can do anything about it. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure about uh, what the right play is. So on, on the flop, I think um, calling might might be the play, but if we call and and King Charles decides to raise or call behind us, we do get some extra info out of him mm. that we might not get when we raise and he cold calls. Yeah. But that's balanced out by the fact that if we raise, we might be able to. Uh, knock him out some of the time. So it's kind of a balance, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Pocket sevens here on the left. Looks like you have three streets of value uh, until he donks. And that's, I mean, I think that's pretty standard hand, right? So. Yeah. If he checks that nine river, I mean, two, you're value betting, right? Against hoping he has six X or something. So. Yes. Yeah. Um... Little pop up there. You looking at some porn during the video? <laughs> it's ICQ. <laughs> the messenger. ICQ. Uh, that's what they call it these days, you kids. Um, something I noticed right away. Looks like you're still looking at it here down at the video. Now it's out of the way. Yep. This guy on the right table here has, what, two bets on the table. Uh, I talk about this some with my, uh, with all of my students, but I'm always looking for weird things to take notes on, like stack size and so on. Uh, Anybody who buys in for less than 12 bets, or at any point has less than 12 bets on the table, I'm always going to take a note. Uh, yeah. Most of the tags will never let that happen to them, obviously. So. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So you already got the note, um, and um, if you sit down, you you see, oh, okay, it uh, might be a good idea to have position on him. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most, like, oh my god, useful thing ever, but when you get into a hand with somebody, and then I always look at my notes and says, bought in five bets. I'm like, hmm, you know, probably not a tag. Yeah. So, uh, ten nine suited is also one of my favorite hands. I think it's everybody's favorite hand, right? It's just <laughs> such a big hand. Uh, it's probably a net loser for us in all of our databases. <laughs> um, here you do decide. I'm going to spoil the action a little bit. You do decide to take him to the fourth floor. What was influencing your decision here versus the ace ten offhand uh, several several minutes ago versus him? Yeah. Again, I'm I'm trying to. Uh keep uh, my cap balanced I guess so um, these uh, suited connectors especially if it's the upper range of it uh, I think um, play pretty well post flop and um, and you get uh, many folds if, if he has uh, uh, if, if, if the flop is ace high or, or king high and he, he didn't hit just because so this is like yeah. somewhat of a deception cap somewhat of a value cap yeah. somewhat of a balancing kind of cap yeah uh, put a lot of somewhat of a fold equity cap. Put a lot of different adjectives in there. Mm -hmm. 
I don't mind I don't mind the cap at all. I just I really like getting thought process on this. I know some guys here never cap pre flop, even in position. Uh, I think KPR and some of those guys, I don't want to hopefully misinterpret them. I think they kind of do a balanced thing. Uh I know some guys here cap very widely in position, you know, yeah. because they know the guy's three betting them very widely. Like uh if this were Enwooch in the small, you're like, well, Enwooch is three betting like thirty percent here or something, so I'm just capping like you know, fours, I'm capping, you know, ace seven suited, whatever, I'm capping yeah. king ten off. Uh, king Charles isn't quite that loose or aggressive, so I think it's good to get the reasons behind why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see how the hand plays out. He just dogs into us anyway, so <laughs> there goes our plan. Yeah. Uh, gross turn, I think folding the turn is fine. We're not getting what we want for our gut. Yeah. And I don't think we have the implied odds either. He's always. Got the best hand there, sure. Yeah, it's not like he's going to cap the cap the river with a set when the trade comes in, so. Yeah. Um, sixes. So far, standard hand on the right. He's probably deciding whether to call down with ace high again. That's not a great card, but not a terrible card. I, are you bad folding this turn? Be kind of a gross spot. Mm, really gross, yeah. Wow, what a nice river. <laughs> this is so silly. I can see you going back and forth. I can just see you're thinking, wow, he has ace high and he's not going to fold anymore. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I think he played the hand really well. Um, the jack-10 hand on the left looked pretty normal. Yeah, the jack-10, I, I, I thought about um, raising preflop uh, after Gus um, limped again. That was yeah. pretty close, so could go, could go either way, but decided to uh, just complete because... UCI man doesn't fold and um, three bets widely. Yeah, this guy here is so loose, exactly. It's kind of like the 8-7 and the 7-6 hands we had on the right table a little while ago. Yeah. Uh, and we still do have position on Gus, so... Yeah, um, yeah and I agree. The I think the 6's hand here on the right, we can both agree. Pre-flop is fine. Flop is totally standard. The turn is totally standard. And now on the river, like... I went back and forth on this for a little bit. Uh, I agree with you about eventually not betting. Mm. I lie. I think a lot of his range is ace high. Yeah. Um. I also think, however, some of his range are non ace high, either pocket pairs or you know spade draws, like whatever you know ten seven of spades or something. Mm. So, I kind of went back and forth on how much I thought we could get him to fold if we bet this river. Like how much of his range is going to fold. I think we can agree. What's he folding on the river? He's folding pocket eights, obviously, on the river, yeah. right? So, uh, is he folding king high on the river? He's not folding ace high. I couldn't really decide where I wanted to draw the line. Probably king high he would call, right? I think he would call, yeah. Uh, and probably, well, I mean, with the queens and jacks on board, probably pocket tens he would fold? I think so, yeah. So, I maybe we should poker stove it, to tell you the truth. I really am... The more I think about it, the more I'm not sure. I mean, our hand is obviously worthless anyway at this point, so maybe we do want to turn it into a bluff. Mm. I mean, it already is a bluff, right? But, uh, yeah. like, I just don't know how often he has 8-7 here, how often he has king-10, how often he has pocket nines, and so on. Definitely interesting to stuff this, yeah. Yeah, maybe we can get some of you guys to comment on this hand in the thread, please. Uh, we'll try and do some stoving. I think at first, and also once you tank for a long time on the river, then I think your check is better. Because when you tank for a long time and bet, he might... I don't know how many uh, timing tells people really put a lot of stock in or pick up on, but when you tank and then bet, sometimes I might, if that happened to me, I might think, wow, the guy just got counterfeit, and then he thought about deciding to bet anyway, you know? Yeah, uh, on the other hand, it might be ace on, on on my hand, which... Yeah, that's true. you could be reverse, time, reverse timing tell. Yeah. Uh, that's why a lot of people don't put a lot of stock in it. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> How many times do you see poor players time out, time down, and then bet, and it's always the nuts, right? So, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll have to go back to this hand at some point afterward. I think I wonder if betting is a little closer than I might have thought at the beginning. Mm. I don't think checking is bad at all, by any means. Yep. Um, it's just silly because, you know, you think, wow, this guy's a good, solid player, and he always seems to do pretty well against me in blind versus blind. Yeah. And it's because of silly turn river combos like that one. Some sometime, you know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um. 
I rambled a lot on that hand, by the way. Feel free to interrupt me if I start rambling again. No, that's fine. Interesting hand, I think. Interesting river. Ace-king here on the left. You open the small blind cold calls, <clears throat> which calls. Not the best turn card ever, but it's still you can still be ahead of both of them pretty often. I definitely, I assume you're probably betting folding depending on if it, where the race comes from. Um, like if you bet UCI man calls and then Wooch pops. Okay, then I'm folding this. Yes. Yeah, if you bet UCI raises and then Wooch folds, you probably would call down, right? Yes. So. And if I'm only getting um, uh, if UCI man folds and and Wooch raises, I'm I'm peeling. If uh yeah, if if it goes what if you bet and it goes raise cold call? Well, I can't see Enwooch. I mean that's a pretty goofy spot. I don't know what Enwooch could have there. Yeah. Like the six of clubs, a six of clubs or so. well no, you have the ace of clubs. That's a, that'd be I mean that's such an unlikely scenario, it's probably not worth talking about. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay so based on what happens on the turn, we might be folding, we might not. River, interesting hand. I mean it's pretty much a brick. Hmm. I can see you kind of deciding whether or not you want a value bet here, right? And you're about, this is a value bet, surely. Yeah. Uh, That's not it. a bluff. Uh, wow, you're going to get called by worst ace high. <laughs> wow, ship it. <laughs> nice hand, or maybe he had king high even, I don't know. But, uh. Yeah, nice high, yeah. When he started tanking, I was pretty sure you had the best hand. That's awesome. Ace, eight, high, looks like. Nice hand. Thank you. How, uh,. How big of an ace are you value betting there? I think I'm only value betting ace king there. Only ace king, although he doesn't have ace queen that often because he didn't re raise pre flop. Yeah, I agree. Um I think um this is uh this is kind of well narrow minded to only um uh, value bet ace king, but I'm feeling more comfortable and I think I have to implement some more ace queen value betting into my arsenal. I mean it, it's not a that a super common spot to, to get to value bet three way like that. I certainly agree with you that ace king is, is super easy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the easiest of the aces by far, just because you can never be outkicked and you're never chopping because he would always three bet ace king pre there. Yeah. Uh, I think you would always three bet ace queen pre though as well. Yeah, that's um, that's true, and I I think um, especially after the cold call, you see, I just cold calls. So I mean, yeah. he he's got to be thinking about getting a ton of value. Even with ace jack, he might three bet pre flop because you're on the button, your your range is very wide. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, wow, and you hmm? turn the nuts here with the yeah. straight. <laughs> I think um just just uh, coming back to your question, uh, ace queen would be a value bet, and um, ace jack might even be a, a thin value bet just because, like you said, he the doesn't. Jack, the jack on the river, so you would have had a pair of jacks then. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Ace ten. I would have been kind of nervous about ace ten, <laughs> yeah. but I can agree. Ace king and ace queen are both value bets. Yeah. 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 Okay. We can agree on that. Just because, I mean, based on how he played a preflop, I don't think, you know, he can have either of those ever. So, yeah. um, that was a cool hand, though. It's such a great feeling to value bet. And as soon as he started timing down, you were like, "Wow, I'm gonna win the pot." Wow, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, win. yeah, it felt great. Or he was gonna snap with pocket twos, and you were gonna hate, hate life. <laughs> uh, ten nine of clubs on the right looks like a hand that we like to play. Wow, that's quite the flop. <laughs> I don't really know why he checked behind. I mean, he's he's probably not a great player, but what do you do if he bets that flop? Um, I think I'm folding. I can see an argument for folding. Maybe I can see an argument for check raising, but yeah. I don't think he bets. I mean, the fact that we just saw him check behind means we know he doesn't bet every flop. So when he does bet the flop, I think we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he would bet the flop with black pocket sixes, for example, or something. Mm. But uh, definitely, it's um, it's a definite uh, turn bet there. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, what if this is, for example, Ann Wooch on the button here, or uh, or King Charles? Do you check raise the flop more often? Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, I think uh, you get much fold equity on these monotone boards. Um, yeah, I mean, check check folding can't be terrible just because of our you know on the monotone flop in general. I uh, I think I, I rarely I rarely check race, but um, most of the time I'm check folding. Yeah, I mean it's one of the two plays. I think check calling is certainly the worst of the three plays. Yeah. So, um, and once he checks behind, I mean a you have the nuts, but b you're probably betting almost any two cards here once he checks behind the flop. So yeah. Um, 
check out this King Ten hand on the left here. You opened and got cold called, and then the blind called. Bet call call. Uh, what do you think of a turn bet here? Um, the King Ten. Yeah, I'm I'm notating it definitely. I I'm not quite sure about it at the moment. Um. I Maybe one of them folds ace high. Uh, maybe if UCI had a small pocket pair, we might put more pressure on him. I, I mean, I don't know if he has sixes or something. If he's ever folding, he probably is never folding. Yeah, the uh, the problem is. Broadway. Yeah. Now looking at it, the problem is they are both uh, really showdown bound. And. Uh, oh, that's Charles is kind of tight, and so probably more showdown bound. Okay, right? I agree. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I I think uh, betting is is quite good actually. And I'm not I'm not sure if check calling is well cross spot. It's like if if you bet and one calls and one folds and the river's a brick, are we pretty much committed to betting the river again to try and fold out ace eight or whatever random thing? Yeah, it depends uh, on the on the river, yeah. Depends on who pe- who peels, which one of them peels and which one. But I mean just as far as pure equity, like you have an open ender, you have an over card. Mm-hmm. I don't think it, we really want to see a ten on the river all that often, but uh, it's not a, the worst card ever. Yeah. Like, if we can get anybody to fold a pair ever or an ace high, it's a pretty good situation for us. Yes. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think you are right. I think betting. You'd bet pocket eights here on the turn again, right? <clears throat> so. Yeah. yeah. Right. One seed, I mean, like this, I think we have to get away from I mean, I think we have to get away from it. But, uh. Hmm. Another interesting spot, I guess. We find a lot of spots, even the ones we, we never took notes on are the ones we're talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's true. Uh, King-Queen on the left, I have a note that this is going to be an interesting hand. Uh, so everybody at home, sit up straight. <laughs> we have the check call, and then we have the... Oh, wow, I thought I was waiting for the donk. Maybe he's going to donk the river. There it is. Uh, this is the fourth or fifth time he's done this. Uh, are you going to pay this <laughs> off? <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> I mean, again, this is another spot where I would be like, well, I beat random straight draws, but he just, he isn't the kind of player that ever has them. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're going to hate me. After the, we're done video, recording this video, you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe he repeated the same thing over and over. <laughs> no, I'm not hating you for this. It's um, Next time you see this guy on the tables, go take a note on him that his turn and river donks are always made hands. Yeah, and definitely will. Just own him over and over, you know? <laughs> Uh, we're going to scroll forward about a minute or so to the next hand, uh, just because I know we have some kind of dead time here. All right, so I'm forwarding to about 35.30, uh, Jay, just so you can check on your thing. Okay. And so we skipped about a minute's worth of time, maybe. not, Probably not even worth it. And then coming up soon here on the right, we're going to have a queen ten of clubs hand, okay. uh, which I know you probably want to make many comments about. <laughs> Guys, I won't spoil it, but I will say that this was uh, this was Jay's I'm making a video hands number two. <laughs> talk talk me through this hand. Talk me through this. Okay, hand. yeah, I I, I um, actually wanted to check raise the flop to begin with. Yeah, you you defend, you defend. You're gonna check raise because I don't hate a check raise. You've got three to the straight flush, you know, and an over, yep. uh, and an over to second pair. He checks behind, <laughs> and now you think. Well, he checked behind last time, and I took it down with the turn bet, so I'm going to bet the turn, right? Exactly. That was my thought. Okay. Uh, he, he foils your plan by calling, and you decide to try and continue your bluff. I don't hate continuing your bluff. Now he raises, and most players would think here, well, I'm pretty much screwed. But you had a different thought process, right? <laughs> well, I, I, thought it, uh, I thought about it for a moment, and I thought about uh, what hands he could have, actually. So um, I want to focus on your mouse right here, going back and forth, back and <laughs> forth. You pull the trigger, he bluff caps, and then you missed an easy bluff call to pick off his lower bluff. <laughs> Such a spew. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, well, I thought about it and um, thought about what he could have, so what hands he could not um, county bet on, on that flop, so I, I, I figured he couldn't, ha- couldn't ever... Um, not bet uh, a seven, not bet um, um, a hard draw. I think he 
Yeah. That's that was just what I was uh, thinking at that time. And I do agree with you that his line is like really yeah. goofy. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I think going back on it, if I had to pick one hand that he has, it's like quad sevens or something, right? Or like ace jack of hearts or like some really big hand that he got fancy with and checked behind. Yeah, right? but I, th- uh, I thought about why why he would ever, <clears throat> yeah, check check behind, um, yeah, a set of sevens there. Yeah, I don't know why he yeah. would do it. I guess, I mean, it's always fun trying to get into these players' minds, right? You know, because if we could do that, we would, I mean, run better than we already do, uh, or do better than we already do. But maybe he was thinking back to a couple hands previous when he checked behind and and you bet and he folded. Maybe he was thinking, wow, this time I have a big hand. I'm going to check behind to trap him, yes. you know? I don't know if that's the right thought process level to attribute to this guy or not. But, yeah, uh, it obviously is. <laughs> Like, <laughs> as soon as I saw you three about it, I was like, wow, I'm going to talk about this hand forever and ever. <laughs> and um, I I was also thinking um, what what I could accomplish with uh, this three bet was, uh, obviously, I tried to make him fold, so... Um, yeah, I mean, you're trying to get him to fold, a, what, a jack X or something, maybe? Yeah, I, I thought about it, and, well, what could he, what could he raise? Um, <clears throat> and I, I, I thought I could maybe... Just represent a flash or, or trips or full house to him, so that he thought, yeah. "Wow, what what can he three bet with? What um, what can I beat? What do you three bet?" So, oh, You're trying to get him to fold slowly, slow played pocket aces or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Game. Uh, I think if GG's and G is a deuces crack member, he's gonna pay you off really lightly in the future. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Hopefully, uh, I think all. This, sorry, go ahead. Everyone will because of this. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ann Wooch and King Charles probably already pay you off really lightly, though, so. Uh, your Jack-7 hand that you just played in the left there, I think, was pretty standard, and I like your value bet on the river, obviously, when you have the nuts. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can go back and look at it for just a sec if you want. Make sure I've got the timing right here. Yeah, Jack-7 of hearts, it's a little bit of an early open for me, actually, with a very loose player next to you. And Enwuch on the button. Mm. I think folding pre-flop would certainly be yes. fine. Um, but I would be popping Jack Nine suited here. So obviously, like popping Jack Seven cannot be wildly wrong, you yes, know. I think. But uh, certainly with these guys behind you, I think folding might be a little safer I play. Might be uh, might have been a bit confused because of the hand on the right table. <laughs> <laughs> you were still in Queen. You were in Spewbot mode over here with Queen Ten. Okay, so you flop two overs in a gut, plus you're C betting your your whole range anyway. He check raises. Okay, I mean, it's an easy call. Uh, he bets again. I think the turn play is a little thin, but probably correct. Uh, what do you think about this turn here? Yeah, I, I definitely have, like, my, my five outs almost always. At four. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting five one with, uh, with a yeah. gut. Yeah. We're happy with a seven on the river, and we're happy with a jack. I don't think we're raising a seven, no, are we? No, I'm definitely not raising a seven, though. No. Are you raising a jack? Would you raise fold? I don't know if I would raise fold. I might just call a jack. Um, I, I think raise folding has some merit. Uh, he might, I mean, might look you up with a four or a three if you exactly. raise a jack. Exactly. Uh, thinking you're, you're bluff raising like your five x <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad he's not on the other table. Uh, oh, he is on the other table. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, he's on the other table. Wow. He just. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think we should definitely given that we should definitely <laughs> yeah. raise. <laughs> Uh, I still wouldn't raise a 7, though, because no. I think 5x is the yeah, yeah. Um, But I think your peel is, is fine. You're getting 5 to 1. You've got two overs. Some are cleaner than others in the gut, obviously. So you have a fair number of outs against his yeah, hand, yeah. I think. That's what it's um, like. And he checks the river. I don't think I've looked up what he has yet. When he check calls, I kind of want to say he has ace 5 or something. What do you think? Yeah, makes sense. Well, that would just be my first guess. Yeah. I don't I think yeah. we've looked at what he has here. I have no idea either. So, Do you think he would bet a pair? Wow, he had oh, ace-5. Nice, nice read. <laughs> I'm, yeah, for once, I did not look it up ahead of time and then act like I knew <laughs> it. Uh, Deucesback.com, I promised you. Uh, every now and then, I can hand-read, okay? Yeah, I didn't know it either, so, but it makes sense, of course, yeah. It, yeah, that's, it is the like, number one hand, yeah, yeah. though, for sure. Uh, looks like your porn site gave you a little pop-up oh, there yeah. again. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
I'm going to go to ICQ.com after this. We're done recording, and if it's a porn uh, site, then uh, you're not allowed to be my student anymore. Unless it's a good porn site. But anyway, we should probably not talk about that during the video. Yeah. Um, looks like we've got a minute or so before the next hand. I'm going to scroll forward just a little bit. And that ace-king suited hand is pretty standard, so there's no point. All right, go forward to about 39 minutes okay. or so. We'll pick up the next hand. Um, and we're getting close to the end of the video, guys. We want to thank you for hanging in there with us because, A, I talk a lot. B, I talk a lot. C, we've had a ton of interesting hands, in my opinion, that we've gotten some good analysis on. Uh, Jay, what do you think? Are we doing all right yeah, here? I think so. I think this is really, really nice start. Yeah. I, I think we're kind of finding our stride. We may have been a little bit, a little bit stuttering at the beginning, a little bit of uncertainty, but we're kind of getting more comfortable with each yeah, other now. Best video for me. Uh, seven eight of diamonds on the right table is a hand we're going to see a flop with because we can make a straight and a flush. Uh, right away, how often are you three betting this hand versus this lag taggy player? Yeah, I think I'm. Well, to give a percentage, I, I think I'm about. I'm three betting this about fifty to sixty percent. Yeah, I was just going to say 60 as just a really yeah. rough guess. I think if you 3-bet it all the time, it wouldn't be bad, yeah. you know? Sure. Uh, if your 3-betting range here were, like, big pairs, big aces, and, like, 6-7 suited to queen-jack suited, you know, but anything, but any suited connector, 6-7 suited and up, you always 3-bet, something yeah. like that. I'm just kind of picking that range up, but I think it sounds okay. Uh, certainly I don't mind just calling with this hand because... If you flop a pair or draw and raise, they're going to pay you off, mm. you know? So, But I would definitely probably 3-bet that a little more than half the time. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I think just holding the flops is certainly better than bluff-raising it. I think bluff-raising it might be an option, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Uh, Especially. I do think it's a, a flop that he has to fold a lot of better hands on right okay, away, though. Okay, that's true. Uh, but the problem is he's aggressive. You know, it has both an ace and a king on it. He probably calls down... One or two barrels with like queen high or something, you know. There's probably not a lot of value in a race, a bluff race. Yeah, there. I'm, I'm not quite sure about about queen high. Well, well, maybe if you had queen ten yeah. or queen jack, I guess yeah, not sure, random. Sure. Okay. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I try to look for more bluff race spots because I'm a little <laughs> nitty still. So, uh, I think it's good that you and I are working together. Our games kind of complement each other pretty well. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, three bit bluff though. <laughs> Don't don't be don't be a J. <laughs> uh, king three against N Wooch. Are you popping any king here? King deuce as well. Um. Okay. Um. You you're talking about the king jack hand. King jack hand. Oh no, we're at about uh, 40 minutes and 50 seconds oh. on our original video. So the king jack suited was. Oh yeah, we went by that. Yeah, I thought that hand yeah. was fine. I didn't even comment on it. Sorry, I thought it was fine. Yeah, sure. Um. So. Um, the king three offsuit or the king four offsuit? King three offsuit. Uh, I just noticed you opened that in the small. Are you opening any king against yes, him? Yes, I think so. Are you opening how far down with your queens? Like queen six, queen five? That sounds reasonable, yeah. Queen five. Yeah. I'm always a little uncomfortable with like the king deuce, queen deuce, queen three kind of hands, but I think king three is too much hand not to open yeah. probably. Yeah, I like uh -huh. to um to keep some some of the deuces and threes in, in my uh, range. Also, that's... And then you turn the nuts and... Uh... Yeah, again, I was uh, taking this line against him, specifically. Yeah, trying to punish him on the turn more because, you know, he's yeah. two-barreling a really wide. All right, pocket tens on the right. We get cold-called by the player who previously had a really short stack. Uh... Their cold call is kind of suspicious to me. I would guess something like, you know, pocket pair, middle suit connectors, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of ace hand that they didn't want to yeah. 3-bet. We turn the nuts so it doesn't really matter. Um, we get action, which is always nice. I don't remember this hand. We get a lot of action. Uh, at this point, I don't put them on pocket jacks, so I put them on, like, pocket fives or pocket deuces probably. Yeah, I right? agree. I'm definitely going all the way with this hand. Yeah, exactly. I'm never not capping, and uh, I guess pocket fives or pocket deuces, yeah. right? You're right. Would be my guess. Pocket fives, I... I mean, fives, they should... What does it look yeah, like? Yeah. Fives, yeah. 
I think they should be three betting fives against you there pre-flop probably. Yes. But, uh, and folding deuces, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I like your check on the river. I'm pretty much always checking to the turn capper. You know, it's just when you bet into the turn capper, it's really strong and you don't get as much action. But when you check, you can often get the check raise in. Yeah. So. And um, the jack, uh, well, it uh, it made sense for him to have the jack, so like a hand of uh, like like ace jack. Yeah, exactly, or some kind of jack x with the yeah. two diamonds because there were the two diamonds yeah. on the turn. Uh, king four on the left yeah, table right. here. Uh, pre flop is fine. Flop is fine. I thought this was a really tough turn mm-hmm. spot. Uh, and you can see the guy on the right here complaining about jolly stars. <laughs> I thought he was going to say stars. Uh, it looks like we have some stats on this guy anyway, and he's a little bit kind of loose. 36 15. Uh, what do we know about this guy, Live Happy, here on the left table? Anything no. at all? No read at all. Um, against somebody with history, you know, I'm not really ready to give this hand up necessarily. Mm-hmm. Against a total unknown who calls the flop and raises the turn, I think we're toast like a ton of the time, a ton, ton, ton of the time. And the times we're not toast, 20% of the time a heart gets there and we are toast. You know, like I think this is, a heart is in his range pretty often or already a made hand that we're drawing. Mm. Probably yeah, I, I agree 100%. So I, I definitely could have let this down. So uh, he will yeah. he will never. You may have been still thinking that the really, like, the 52-30 guy who was in the seat two minutes ago might still have mm-hmm. been there. Uh, against him, I might grip my teeth and call yeah. down on a lot of safe rivers. Yeah. But uh, thinking he can raise jack of hearts, you know, nine here or something, right? But, yeah, uh, Heavy won't, won't ever raise a queen here, so... Yeah, as played, I mean, I am I think we're looking at, like, flushes, two pairs, straights, you know... Uh, Maybe the, uh, some hand like uh, ace-jack, ace-ten. Could be yeah yeah exactly we're like and we were looking at basically the nuts yeah. uh that's the kind of hand where it really just depends on who we're playing against yeah as far as uh, what we're gonna do king's hand here I didn't see all the action so well we just gave away that we got check raised on the river this looks like the last big hand of the session so let's kind of see what happens here with these kings on the right yeah. always nice to cold cap them obviously uh do you ever consider just cold calling there to balance your range um. It's a joke. It's uh, okay, a joke. okay, I, 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 I didn't get the hint, but but now I've got it. Okay, <laughs> well, cold calling has has definitely got some merit here. <laughs> I like I like to cold call aces, kings, seven deuce, and seven three to balance my <laughs> <Yeah>. range. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean we jam pre flop and then jam all the way down in yeah. standard. I don't think there's any value in a river three bet after this action, obviously. No, definitely. So not. I think he played the hand once he check raises the river. And the uh, the insta check raise made me really think about folding or. Almost, but yeah, I mean, I I, I could never fold, yeah. but you're certainly not good a ton of the time. Yeah. Uh, almost never. Yeah, a nice hand to end the session on, pretty much. I believe that is the. Let's just let the time kind of run out here on the last minute or half minute and a half or so of hands, uh, and let's kind of do a little conclusion talk here. What kind of stuff do you feel like you did well in the session? What do you feel like you had some trouble with, and so on? Yeah, uh, obviously the 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 my my play against Gastino, the the player on the left, uh, the the guy who kept donking his made hands to us, yeah. The play against him uh, was quite bad on on my part, um, because yeah, he was the reason I sat there, but um, I ca- he kept owning me, he kept hitting and and donking it, and I kept calling him with uh, a high king high. <laughs> so. so we had a good seat against a poor player, but we maybe didn't adjust as well as we could yeah, have. That's it. So that's maybe an important lesson to take out of this. Uh, I thought you had a lot of battles with N. Wooch, where, I mean, I thought you held your own pretty well. You made a couple big hands against him. Uh, you got counterfeit once on the right table here in a kind of a gross spot. Yeah, and I, I tried um, the reverse uh, check raise, which didn't work. <laughs> you uh, just got owned by this guy, GG's and G here, who just <laughs> tapped you on the river when you were betting. <laughs> yeah. Um. As far as how, would you say that these two games you found are pretty typical of the 1020 at Stars? I mean, you had two pretty good tables, I think, for a lot of yeah, the time. Yeah, I think um, it's um, most of the time it's uh, it, it really depends. It's uh, tough to find um, two tables that are this good um, on, on which you have um, this good of a um, seat. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you had a seat on, on you know, a poor player at each table for a exactly. long time. Uh, to those of you watching at home, I know we've made this into like a 14-hour video, but it was really only about 45 minutes of play. Uh, hopefully I'll be invited back to make a second <laughs> video for Deuces Cracked. That looks like the end of the uh, the recording. Let's see, any other thing you want to talk about really quickly, Jonas? Um, or? No, I can't think of anything at the moment. I'm sure a lot of stuff will come up in the uh, thread accompanying this video in the forums and so yeah, on. Particularly, uh, uh, maybe we can yeah. post. Particularly the the hand which you wanted to stove. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's one hand we wanted to stove. There were a couple hands where we talked about where neither of us were really sure what the best action was, and obviously that's why we love being on a forum like this. We can get input from tons of guys. Uh, we really appreciate all of you watching our first video here, and hopefully there'll be more in the future. Uh, on behalf of Jay Beastie, this is BBB. Uh, thanking you guys for watching and signing off. We'll see you on the forums.